So a little bit about the consortium. We are a nonprofit alliance of member companies really focused on thinking about how we improve engagement across all of the touch points that we have with a clear focus on the support and services industry. That is our baseline and where we start from, but it is expanding every day into any part of an organization that is focused on knowledge management and engagement, whether that's engagement with employees, engagement with customers, engagement across the organization. It is our member companies that are really the ones that are championing all the work and experimenting and playing and sharing their experiences back with the consortium and the other members that allows us to do all the work that we're doing. So when we're talking about what we're seeing in the AI landscape, it is based a lot on what we're hearing from and working with all of our member companies on, along with interactions with the academic community and other industry groups. So these are things that are put together based on the operational experiences that we're seeing in our member companies. And it's their funding that allows us to continue to interact and work together. So thank you to all of our member companies and all the people that are contributing to the work that's getting done across the consortium. One of the things that member companies are working on, and we have uh, some working sessions on is, well, how do we minimize or eliminate the trough of disillusionment? So as we're now at this peak of inflated expectations, and we're hearing this from our executives, and we're hearing this from our business, how do we minimize the drop off? So how do we kind of make sure that as we start to realize the realities of implementing these tools, how do we get to the plateau of productivity much, much faster? So that's what I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about now is ways to think about implementing AI and some of the things we're seeing our member companies do. So we have quite a bit of history with machine learning, with AI. I think we all understand that there is valid hype around what AI is doing today, but it isn't changing our businesses overnight the way maybe we're being told it should be. We know how to do this. I had a great discussion with three consortium members, Albert Miles from Red Hat, Christina Rosen from Akamai, and uh, Kristen Hunter, who just moved to a new company, um, around this topic of what does it take to implement AI in our organizations and how do we think about it? And really, it comes down to that we already know how to do this. We already know how to implement AI. We already know how to, to leverage the benefits of these things. And I saw this from the uh, Boston Consulting Group, which seems to validate a lot of what we're seeing across the membership and across the industry, that we all understand technology and data is critically important, has been forever, and it will be. I mean, we're never getting away from being in a technology environment. But the transformation of our operations and our teams is what's most critical for success. And what BCG is saying is that companies that are being successful early on in the AI game are spending about 10% of their time, energy, resources on the actual AI models, algorithms, and gen AI. About 20% of their time, resources, and energy on the technology and IT infrastructure to make sure they have the data platforms, the quality, the visualization tools in place to leverage the AI technology and about 70% on the operational transformation. So the business processes, the use cases, do we have the talents and skills we need? How are we gonna do change management? How are we communicating these things out? So it kind of validates what we're hearing from member companies around all the excitement around the AI models, but the energy and effort is actually an operational transformation, not the actual AI model. From a consortium team meeting in 2023 on getting started with AI, there were three success factors that really started to converge. So defining clear objectives, making sure we know what we're doing, how is it going to help our customers, how is it going to help our employees and our business be successful, securing business buy-in. And one of our members said, if you want me to give you a return, you need to make the investment. And it feels like an AI right now. We're not making any investment. We're just immediately expecting to be getting a bunch of return. So how are we going to get that investment? We need to agree on the measures and baseline. We need to set expectations and clear timelines. And you better let me get the resources I need. So I need to have defined roles and responsibilities across my organization. And I need to have the right technology. So what do I need and what do I have? And is it easier to buy something or is it easier to build something internal? Structuring our thinking into these three buckets seemed to be a way to start to calm that hype cycle down 
and start to say we have an approach to implementing any new technology, but especially calming down the craziness around the AI landscape right now. Talking through all this, it sounded a lot like program and change management, and this is no different than anything else that we're doing. So do we have a strategy? Do we understand our enterprise potential for AI? Is the organization prepared across our people, our processes, and technology? Do we understand the real opportunities and do those opportunities for AI align to the business and the business use cases and what the business is trying to achieve? Do we have valid data? Do we have access to the data? Is it quality data? Do we have a life cycle for our data? So do we understand our data integrity? AI solution development, build versus buy. How do we create the model, train the model, validate the model? Do we have governance in place? Do we have security in place? And as we deploy it, do we understand how we're going to manage it, how we're going to scale it, how we're going to operationalize it? Under all of this, do we understand the hidden costs of training these models? Do we understand the hidden costs of the data warehousing that we need? Lots of different things to think through. But it pretty much is very similar to any of the program management or change management functions that are out there. You can actually now get certified from the Project Management Institute on AI project management. There's definitely this realization that one, we know how to do this. It's just a different technology and a different tool. The problem is we seem to have thrown everything away and just jumped right to a solution, AI solution development, where I need AI now. And oh, by the way, because we're all very smart companies and these tools are so readily available, I built 10 amazing experiments. When can you just put them into production? Not thinking about all the really, really negative consequences that can come when you take an experiment and just dump it into production. So I want to kind of take us through three different examples from three different member companies on how they're approaching this and seeing results. So how they're moving out of the hype cycle to the reality cycle and thinking through all of these different steps to get to real ROI on their investment in the, uh, the AI world. So when is PTC presented at the Member Summit 2024 on their approach to leveraging Gen AI uh, done by, by Roman Garcia, following kind of the standard path of we're going to select our key processes for evaluation against AI. So we're thinking about our use cases, we're thinking about our stakeholders, we're thinking about our strategy. Once we've thought through that, we're bringing our process owners and our subject matter experts together, make sure we're pulling in the right people that have the right skills to make decisions. And then they held a workshop to identify the potential use cases against their most critical support processes and how can Gen AI, Gen AI impact those processes. From that workshop, they created themes across their support organization for where Gen AI could have an impact, ranging from helping humans author content and follow defined standards through more advanced uh, conversational engagement directly with the knowledge base. So thinking about all those use cases, breaking them down into these themes, but then focusing on the technology, the cost, and the ease of implementation, along with the value it would deliver back to them. So doing things around helping humans author content, super easy for them to prototype, where building conversational engagement with the knowledge base would require a lot more investment and a lot more corporate support across the entire company. They also balance this against where they are. They are a very mature KCS house with very mature engagement models. 80% of all of their engagements are done electronically. So even now looking at you know capturing voice-based interactions, they don't do a lot of voice-based interactions. So while that is a super interesting use case for AI, the value to them of doing that is far less than continuing to capture and create new content leveraging AI from their interactions with their customers electronically. So they focused in on how do we start moving stuff from these easy to prototypes into a production with a pretty easy deployment strategy, but making sure that all the people that would have to deploy it from proof of concept to the business system integration were involved in the process. So they were very strategic and thoughtful about Let's look at our business processes and the strategy of the organization and what we're trying to improve on. What are the use cases that we can develop for Gen AI based on the process owners and the stakeholders and what they feel would be beneficial for the organization? Made that into, well, how do we deploy the technology that we have? What would be easy to prototype versus expensive and difficult? Picked use cases and then went and made sure that from proof of concept to business system integration, they had the entire organization lined up behind them. Very successful, and today in production, they have a 
system that creates draft articles for them for publishing. It creates the draft article because they still want humans to review it. One of the things Gen AI is very good at is answering a question even when it doesn't have the answer. So they get a lot of hallucinations. So they aren't at a point yet where they can just take and have the AI develop something and publish it, but they make sure that humans are there to curate it and validate it. But it has increased their content creation because it's so much easier than before. They're getting more accurate because now that I've created it, the human can easily edit it and move it forward. It's always easier to edit something somebody else wrote than to create it yourself. So they're seeing a lot of great success with this. I was on a call with PTC this morning, actually, on some of the advancements they're making. So look for them to be presenting more on some of the, the changes and advancements they've been making with some of their, their stuff. Another great example is Akamai. Akamai has been a consortium member for a long time now, and everything that they do is with a thoughtful approach. I've never seen them approach anything without really thinking through the impacts. They have a really strong business team that helps manage all of that. Akamai is also a very high technology company with a lot of super smart people. So experimentation is done everywhere and very much distributed because people have access to the AI tools. They're creating lots and lots of AI tools. This plan was created specifically because they had a whole bunch of people that had jumped to the AI solution development without doing any other things. And how do you manage those expectations when somebody comes and says, look at this thing I built, which is amazing. Uh, there's a lot of stuff to worry about before we scale into production. So this model was built specifically to help organize and structure all of the great work being done in the experimentation phase and how can they then adopt that. And I left the quarters in there. This is a screenshot, obviously, of their direct slide because it kind of shows that it's not years and years before we can implement things, right? We can do it in quarters, but it is going to take some thoughtful approaches in order to get from we've got lots of potential use cases to what we scale into production. So they've got this idea of we have lots of eligible use cases, whether they're proof of concepts or experimentation being done or ideas. And how do we find the most qualified use cases with a leadership committee? So a leadership committee that kind of is stakeholder management saying, OK, we're behind all of these different use cases. So now let's go and prioritize these with our stakeholder leaders and select the use cases that want to move into proof of concept and then start testing those. So a bit of a funnel to take all these great ideas and validate them and work them through the system and work them through the stakeholders to get to a point where we can start testing use cases. Very similar to what PTC did in let's talk to our process owners and find the most eligible places that we can have an impact with Gen AI. Let's bring them together and understand the use cases and prioritize those use cases. And then based on our technologies, move them into a proof of concept. So two very, very similar approaches to going from hype and chaos to structured implementation of AI. Akamai also, I, it's one of the more mature slides I've seen on, well, are we going to build or buy? So when we're going to develop and deploy an AI solution, are we going to do that with a vendor provided AI capability? Are we going to do it with AI on a platform? So, so you know, a built-in system, or do we need to build something from the ground up? And similar to the PTC's maturity model, what is good and bad about all these different solutions? So AI with a partner, tech adoption is pretty easy because they're doing the tech, but then it gets a little more challenging with our legal security and compliance, building silos, architecture for scale across Akamai, where if we built everything in-house, well, we know we would be able to control legal and security and compliance, and we know the architecture of it, but the tech adoption will be hard. And now we have to maintain the tech. We have to maintain everything that's going on. So again, a, a very thoughtful approach to looking at, well, how do we start to implement these things and, and where do they go? So I love the Akamai example, because again, it's filling in all the bubbles of our process to implement and follow a solution. And then the last company I kind of want to talk through a little bit is Red Hot. Uh, Red Hot, Red Hat. What what Red Hat's doing is Red Hot, but Red Hat's uh, approach. Uh, Albert Miles presented at the automation team meeting that we had in June. Really, one of the stronger presentations on a thoughtful approach with real results. What Red Hat has done is look at the ecosystem around knowledge management powered by their KCS implementation. Very long, strong, powerful KCS implementation where artificial intelligence can be brought in, and then the impacts with business intelligence 
intelligence, business systems. And how do these three things play together? And we know that knowledge management drives content to AI. Uh, KCS is a very strong foundation for leveraging AI, but we can use AI to also drive improvements to our knowledge base and to knowledge management. So the content we're creating through our KCS implementation is fueling our artificial intelligence, but now we can use artificial intelligence to create draft articles that then go back into our knowledge base and can be curated by people to make sure they're accurate, which then helps us drive our AI. Kind of a great way to just visualize that KCS and knowledge management is a foundational component to driving our artificial intelligence and how can we leverage artificial intelligence to drive our knowledge program. Similar, AI can drive improvements to our business intelligence and business intelligence drives improvements to our AI. Monitoring how our knowledge base is being used by AI. Are we surfacing the right articles? When we have the AI creating draft articles, how accurate are those draft articles, right? Business intelligence can look at these things and then say, well, we need to go update the models. We need to go update the way it's being trained based on what we're seeing. And AI can be used to surface all kinds of great things in business intelligence. We can use AI to look for trends. We can use AI to look for things that we just can't see today. So again, a, a great relationship between artificial intelligence and business intelligence to help drive each other. And then BI drives improvements to knowledge management as we're looking at things like PAR, all the different things we wanna track in the uh, Evolve loop. These things can help us drive a stronger knowledge management program and business intelligence is where we can collect all that information. Knowledge management informs our business intelligence on what we're trying to achieve, what are the things that are going on in the knowledge base. So we're still playing with this model. We thought this was a great foundation. So this is one of the things that we're, we're using uh, and working with Albert on to kind of make a little more standardized across the consortium membership. But how Red Hat is implementing this has led to some really great implementations of AI. So search re-ranking, so using a Mistral model, which Albert would have to tell you more about, to improve customer search, uh, to make it more relevant in content matching. AI generated snippets, so using the model to summarize KCS content into little snippets for consumption. When you do a Google search and it gives you those little things right at the top that are kind of pulled from other articles as opposed to having to read the whole article. So using AI to kind of generate those snippets for KCS content. And then something they're calling KCS Copilot, which has three components to it, a workflow assistant, which is creating case notes summaries and next steps. So in a 24 by seven model, when we uh, have to move cases around the world, it allows us to take all the notes that have been created and kind of summarize those in the next steps for a handoff to the next region. So the next region doesn't have to go through and read all of the notes to try and figure out what is going on. Or if I'm about to pass my work off, I don't have to take the time to write all these steps of things to do. And similar to PTC doing KCS draft assistance, so helping create draft articles. Enhanced curation, doing duplicate checks to see if articles are being created uh, that are duplicates, and auto-tagging and auto-linking. So leveraging AI to help them with some of the curation of the knowledge base. And then quality assurance, automating things like PAR, the quality checks, which drives over into BI. But some real world examples of leveraging AI to have significant impact on the efficiency of the organization and hopefully improve how we are serving up information both to agents, support engineers that are on the phone or working with customers, as well as directly out to our customers in the turn in the in snippets and things like that. So those are kind of three examples of companies that have really started to structure and organize their thinking around AI implementing things and seeing real results, as opposed to starting with my hair's on fire. I've been told to implement AI. I don't know what to do, but how do we start to back that up into a thoughtful approach? All the examples that we've talked about so far have a common thread of KCS as a way to think about knowledge creation, capture, to train AI. And KCS does have a big impact on the kind of critical components when thinking about AI. So data quality, KCS provides very high quality data for AI. KCS is not a free for all. We should have a content standard, licensing models, all these things in place to make sure that 
the content that we're creating is kept up to date, is modified when things are changing in our environment, that we're capturing the new things and starting to turn those into known things. So data quality is very high across KCS. It's also very transparent and secure. So because we know exactly how it's being created, we're not wondering, well, where is this content coming from? Is this some random blog post that somebody wrote? I have no idea if any of this is accurate. We know where the KCS content is coming from. It's easy to understand. It comes from very secure data sources and it's reliable. So we're, we're really creating reliable data that can enhance our AI outcomes and the reliability of our AI engines. And we have examples from many companies right now that are using their KCS content as the training data, as well as serving up solutions, suggestions for their model. So I kind of wanted to come back to this model. There are lots of them like this, but we know that this AI is going to transform our businesses. It already is. It's already transforming how we do things. Um, it is absolutely great at writing draft things for you. It is lots of great applications, and we're starting to see them really impact services and support, and that is just going to accelerate. Over the coming months, we're going to be continuing to refine our thinking about the use cases. I think customer journey maps are an AI superpower because if you think about what is my customer journey map, and then where in that journey can AI make the journey smoother, faster, better for our customers? Like it really is an AI superpower. So we're gonna be doing some work on looking at what is the journey and what are the things that are taking place in that journey? So there's lots of things that are, are coming and we're gonna be working on in the coming months and years. But starting with, what is my thoughtful approach to all of this is really helpful in communicating out to the organization, to your executives, to the board of directors, to whoever you need to communicate to on, we are taking AI seriously. We are not falling behind on AI. We have an approach and we understand what we're going to try and accomplish. And remembering that 10% of our energy should be on the actual AI model, the algorithms, the gen AI, 20% on the technology and the platforms and the quality of our data, and then 70% on business processes, the use cases, are we prepared to implement these things? And if we approach it this way, it's easy to be successful with it in a scaled approach, leveraging either tools that you already own, tools that you can purchase, or tools that you can build and implement. But it gives that roadmap for figuring all of those things out. This is a conversation that is going to continue. It clearly is one of the hottest topics right now in the industry and across the consortium membership. Highly recommend visiting the consortium event page pretty frequently. We're adding events all the time. If you're not a part of the newsletters, as a member or as a non-member, uh, highly recommend signing up. It's a great way to stay up to date on public events, member-only events, and things that we're seeing and hearing. If you are a member company, ensure you have access to the member wiki. So all those use cases, the ongoing work around AI are being captured in the members-only wiki. Share your AI stories at working events. I can't imagine there's anybody on the phone today that isn't playing or doing something with AI in their environment. So we would love to hear those stories and share those at our working events to help us continue to build out these models. If you're not a member and you want to know more about how to come play with us and all these amazing companies that are playing with these technologies or implementing these technologies, always open to have discussions about how people can engage with, with the consortium and the consortium member companies. And we have a save the date already for the summit, which will be taking place in March of 2025 at the Thompson Hotel in Atlanta, Georgia. And I'm just guessing that AI will be one of the topics that people want to talk about at the summit and sharing their stories, getting updates from Red Hat, PTC, and all the other people that are working on it. Uh, it was a big theme last year. I think next year it will be a theme that continues but we'll start to be more structured with actual use cases and approaches where this year it was, well, what are we doing with it? What are the possibilities? So I think we're moving from that hype into the reality of AI and how it's going to impact organizations. It is going to accelerate and we are going to see more and more exciting things being done by our members. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me directly at 
at serviceinnovation.org, or if you send a email to uh, support at serviceinnovation.org, that goes to Jennifer Morkat, who will either answer your questions or get you in touch with the right people to, to answer your questions.